by Matt Snyder. It's Monday, which means a somewhat abbreviated slate of games, but we're only three games shy. Here's everything you need to know about Monday's action. Monday's scores Athletics 5, Tigers 4, Box 4, Royals 2, Angels 0, Box score, Yankees 4, Phillies 2, Box score, Mariners 5, Orioles 3, Box score, Pirates 6, Mets 4, Box score, Rays 11, Nationals 0, Box score, Marlins 9, Diamondbacks 5, Box score, Braves 5, Reds 4 and 11 innings, Box score, Rangers 7, Padres 4, Box score, Blue Jays 6, Astros 3, Box score, Cardinals 4, Indians 0, Box score, Dodgers 2, Cubs 1, Box score, Reds winning streak ends on a walk off the Reds' longest winning streak since 2012 came to a heartbreaking end Monday night. Ozzy Albies ended Cincinnati's seven-game winning streak with an 11th inning walk-off homer. To the action footage, Fox Sports Braves at Fox Sports Braves, June 26, 2018 The Reds rallied from down 2-0 earlier in the game and the bullpen was very good overall, at least until Dylan Floro served up the walk-off homer. Cincinnati had won 7 straight in 10 of their last 12 games. Been a while since they had a stretch like that. As for the Braves, their win combined with the Phillies' loss gives them a 3.5 game lead in the NL East. Hardly insurmountable at this point of the season, but all things considered, Atlanta is sitting in a pretty good spot right now. They have the prospect to go out and add an impact pieces at the trade deadline too. Cardinals snap Indians winning streak The Indians can kiss their seven-game winning streak goodbye. They were shut out by John Gant and the Cardinals. Not the end of the world, Indians fans. The losing streak was bound to end sometime. Gant was really terrific. He is replacing the injured Michael Waka in the rotation and he kept the tribe off balance for seven innings. View profile The Indians will shake off the loss and try to start a new winning streak Tuesday. The Cardinals. They're working to right the ship following a recent skid that saw them lose eight times in ten games. Saint. Lewis is starting to climb out of it now, Monday's win was their second straight, but there is a lot more work to be done to catch the Brewers and Cubs in the NL Central. Dodgers best Cubs in 2017 NLCS rematch part 2 Last week the Dodgers and Cubs met in Wrigley Field for a rematch of the 2017 NLCS. The home Cubbies took 2 of 3 in that series. On Monday, the Dodgers and Cubs got together again, this time for the first of 4 at Dodger Stadium. And, once again, the Dodgers took the first game of the series. They didn't need a late-inning comeback like last Tuesday though. Kent and Maeda was marvelous on the mound. View profile The Cubs did make things interesting in the ninth. They scored a run against Kenley Jansen and the tying run was on first base when the game ended, but ultimately, the rally fell short. The season series between these two NL powerhouses is now tied at two games apiece. Miller's return for D-backs disappoints for the first time since April 23rd of last season, Shelby Miller towed the slab in a major league game Monday night. He completed his Tommy John surgery rehab and rejoined the Diamondbacks in their series opener against the Marlins. It did not go well. Miller allowed five runs and didn't make it out of the fourth inning. On one hand, it was Miller's first start back from Tommy John surgery, so I'm inclined to give him a mulligan. On the other hand, Miller's performance was not good with the D-backs before his elbow gave out. He pitched to a 5.78 era in 24 starts and 123 innings with Arizona from 2016-17. The good news is Miller showed good velocity on his fastball, averaging 94.8 miles per hour and topping out at 96.5 miles per hour. The bad news is he threw his curveball 22 times and got one swing and a miss. Among those 22 curveballs, Miller got four called strikes, three foul balls, and one swing and miss. That's eight strikes with 22 curveballs. That'll have to improve going forward. Mets continue to sink it is truly hard to believe the Mets were 11-1 at one point this season. 
Monday night's loss to the Pirates was their seventh straight loss they've been outscored 53-36 in the seven games, and it dropped the Mets to 31-45 on the season. Do the math, they're 20-44 since that 11-1 start. Yeesh. The Mets were limited to six hits Monday night while the top five hitters in Pittsburgh's lineup went to combined six for 20.300 with five runs scored, five runs driven in, three walks, and two strikeouts. Seth Lugo was charged with three runs, one earned, in five innings the updated bottom of the NL standings, 15. Marlins, 32 minus 4,714. Mets, 31 to 45. The Mets are now just one win better than the Antiven Tryon Marlins and a half game up in the standings. The Mets are already the quickest team in baseball history to go from 10 games over .500 to 10 games under .500. Could they soon be in line for the no pick in the 2019 draft? Bridget hits a homer, robs a homer, the most under the radar player this month. It might be Blue Jays outfielder Randall Grichuk. He had been 18 for 59.305, with 5 doubles and 6 homers in 18 games prior to swatting a monster 2-run home run Monday night. Statcast had it at 471 feet. Check it out. More important than the home run he hit is the home run he robbed. In the bottom of the ninth, Grichuk took a would-be, game-tying three-run home run away from George Springer. There's no doubt this was going over the wall. Not a bad night, eh? Grichuk put two runs on the board and took three runs away Monday. Jackson makes history, pitches well MLB history was made Monday afternoon in Detroit. Obscure history, but still history, Edwin Jackson, who was making his debut with the A's, officially tied Octavio Dotel's record by playing for his 13th different team. Jackson is only 34, too. He could still add a few more franchises to the ledger before it's all said and done. Edwin Jackson on tying Dotel's record for most ML teams says, It's a fun baseball fact for the, the scoreboard. Susan Slusser, at Susan Slusser, June 25, 2018 Jackson pitched well in his ace debut. He allowed one run and struck out seven in six innings. View profile StatCast says Jackson averaged 92.6 miles per hour with his fastball and topped out at 96.8 miles per hour during Monday's start, which is very nice velocity. The A's are dealing with some rotation injuries at the moment and Monday's outing likely earned Jackson another start in five days. Keller continues to impress for Royals It sure looks like the Royals have found something in Rule 5 draft pick Brad Keller. The right-hander started the season in the bullpen before moving into the rotation, and on Monday afternoon, he made his fifth start of the season. Keller shut the Angels right down, view profile Keller also had 14 ground ball outs, 14. Compared to just one in the air. He now has a 60.7% ground ball rate in 48 total innings this season, and a 2.45 era in 5 starts. Many Rule 5 draft picks are older guys who have spent a long time in the minors, but Keller is only 22. The D-back selected him in the 8th round of the 2013 draft and he had never pitched above AA prior to this season. The Royals have a history of strong Rule 5 draft picks, Joachim Soria is the gold standard here, and it sure looks like they've found another one in Keller. Bettence's honors Sheffield thanks to the magic of interleague play, Yankees setup man Dylan Bettence has got the first at-bat of his big league career. Since he doesn't get to bat often, or ever, Bettens has decided to have some fun with it. He channeled Gary Sheffield with his bat waggle. Check it out, the bat waggle didn't help Bettens has hit like Sheffield, he struck out on three pitches, naturally, but hey, it's the thought that counts, right? And yes, Bettens has confirmed after the game that Sheffield did inspire the bat waggle, Bettens is on his AB, I tried to go out there and do my best Gary Sheffield impression. I didn't make any contact, though. I used to hit like that in high school, goofing around and stuff. 
scary. I liked to watch him play and like the way he hit. Brian Hoke at Brian Hotch, June 26, 2018. That's the best and most fun thing any pitcher will do at the plate this season. Quick Hits Live Team Updates A Twitter list by Dane Perry. Keep up to date on the latest MLB Power Rankings, written by our experts.